Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge, and today we have That Darn Cat, the 1997 remake of the original classic one starring Haley uh, Mills and Dean Jones. Well, hey, guess what? There's a connection uh, to the old one and the new one. Dean Jones is in this one also, but he plays an older gentleman. He's, uh, he's a supposedly like a rich guy in Boston whose maid is kidnapped. For reasons I still don't understand, I guess there is a ransom kind of thing going on. Like I don't know. It's a it's a it's May gets kidnapped. By the way, he's uh, his his wife is played by Diane Cannon, and they're both over the top, just goofy, uh, cartoonish versions of human beings. <laughs> What's the most cartoonish version you could think of of a, a, a rich man and a woman who's very vain? Well, this is what you get. But they're not the stars of the film. No, we have Christina Ricci as the young girl, who the, the Haley Mills uh, role. And uh, in the original one, uh, what's his name? Uh, Zeke Kelso is played by Dean Jones. But in this one, it's played by Dougie Doug. Yes, the guy you might know from uh, Cool Runnings and a few other things, but mainly Cool Runnings. Uh, he plays a bumbling FBI agent who is trying to prove himself, and uh, when he gets ringed into taking uh, the report from this young girl who believes her cat was has found or witness to a crime or found evidence to a cr the, the kidnapping, uh, he gets drawn into this whole hullabaloo of a mess. Uh, in that darn cat, and it is a, it is a considerable mess. There's a lot of famous people in this film. There's just a ton. Uh, and B uh, Peter Boyle is in this. Uh, and his his wife in this is uh, come on, scroll down. Uh, Rebecca Shull. Even if you don't recognize those names offhand, when you see their faces, if you've seen movies in the last 50, 60 years, you'll recognize them. You'll Peter Boyle. He's been in a ton of stuff. But he uh, played uh, Frankenstein's monster in uh, Young Frankenstein. Yeah, it's, yeah, it, you're too young to understand. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, there's also, oh, let's see, I'm going to go down the list here just real quick here. Michael McKeon plays uh, Christina Ricci's dad, uh, and her, her mom is Bess Armstrong. Uh, there's a subplot with other people in the town. The, the, the point, the, the kind of the. the the thing that tells us anything about Christina Ricci's character, which whose name I can't even remember, Patty, um, Christina Ricci's character, Patty, she's kind of different. She's odd. She wears all black. She's not, no, she's not Wednesday Adams, uh, and she doesn't, I don't know if it was like a meant to be a, oh, hey, remember that girl who played Wednesday Adams? She's grown up a little bit, and she's wearing, still wearing black. Well. This girl is nowhere near as morose as Wednesday, but still, it's, she's, and even so, she's not like, yeah, she's a little cynical and she's a little, uh, smartass, but she's really not, like, as dark or negative as I think she was supposed to be, I guess, in this. Um, she's, I guess she's a, she's a teenager, um, she doesn't drive yet, so she's, fairly young teenager I guess and the only person she likes is her cat uh, she tries to get her mom to swear this is a Disney film by the way so swearing is the word darn it is the word hell and the word hell is used a number of times because uh, it's a clue and so this is all stitched together in a very chaotic just insane way. There are so many freaking characters in this, and many of them are just sort of incidental kind of background characters. They have their own storylines, but have nothing to do with the main storyline, but they they weave in and out, and they're connected in some way. I think it was supposed to, you were, we're supposed to think that since the cat finds the kidnapped woman in this small town outside of, a good hour outside of Boston, that the criminals must be based in this small town. And maybe those criminals are one of the characters we meet along the way. And the way we're introduced to them for the first time is when DC, the cat, that darn cat, um, takes his nightly walk at 8 o'clock in the evening and just 
strolls throughout the town and and you get to see them on their path as they see each individual person the the butcher lady the, the shut-in woman the the old couple who dances in the chocolate shop or the diner or whatever you know like the old kind of soda jerk store you know kind of thing uh <laughs> This is a very small kind of backwoods, olden times kind of town. So they, everybody, it's it's kind of boring to Patty, and, and nothing ever happens. So this is kind of exciting for her to actually get involved in what's going on in town. Uh, Mom and Dad uh, are also just sort of there. They're they're nice to her. They they love her, but um, it it just they're also boring to her as well. But again, we meet all these other different characters. Uh, at, oh, the bumbling pair of cops one of which is tom wilson uh who was biff in uh, back to the future and griff and every every other version of biff that there was um and there's oh there's also uh uh brian haley plays marvin his brother um good grief uh megan cavanaugh plays lou oh and uh there's a a rival gas station storyline be, that's that features John Ratzenberger from Cheers and also a voice in so many, nearly all of the Pixar films, and he, between him and uh, Mark Christopher Lawrence, they're just ripe. They just they attack each other's gas stations at night across the street from each other. And again, it's this is all meant to be just goofy, silly. Well, these people aren't normal. All when when the lights go down and the night comes and you you think everything's just boring and 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 uninteresting, people just get weird, and that's what is revealed as not only as we see the cat go through everything, but when we see the cat being followed by FBI agents at the insistence of Zeke and Patty, um, who they think they're just doing something absurd, but they suddenly discover, oh my gosh, there's a lot of weird stuff going down in this town. And is it all connected to this crime that we're dealing with? And uh, no, yes and no. No, mostly no. <laughs> but it's still silly and crazy. And by the way, every it seems like 95% like of the dialogue in this film added in post. All of it was looped. All of it, just a, it's mainly all ADR. There's a, if there's anything, it's like a two shot of just two people having a conversation and maybe that's not looped. Maybe. <laughs> it's looping is when people do voiceover work, voice work, when say it wasn't recorded well at the time with the mics and everything else, uh, when it was filmed, uh, they go back in the studio and they re-record all their lines as they watch the film and it gets added in post and then you have a movie. And it's so obvious in this it feels obvious anyway. I could be completely wrong, but it sounds so bad so often. So much of it is, it just feels like nearly every line in this is looped. It's crazy. And there's, there is one part of, what was I, I going to say? It had to do with the looping. I forget already. Jeez. It's just, just a lot going on here. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot and nothing going on in this film. In fact, it, it ends in a. It. I think they were just like, you know what? We have this whole storyline, but we can't end it the same way they did in the old version of the film, with Dean Jones and Haley Mills. So let's do a big 1997 version with corporate-made ska music. Which honestly, it was like literally they got executives to make something that sounded like ska on a Casio keyboard, and they called it a theme song. Ugh. And then, but during, at one point at the end, they decide, okay, there needs to be a car chase. So, yeah, let's put the bad guys in the car with the kidnapped woman being chased by Patty and Zeke in a much slower car. And then there's also a cat show happening at the same time where cats are running everywhere. And then they, as they chase each other through the streets of this small town, which isn't very big, um, every other background storyline with every one of the characters is connected with in one way or another creating a very literally explosive ending to the chase but just to go you know what let's up the scales to make this look like it's something that we're building towards and it's interesting it's not 
So I'm just going to make it very clear to you. This is not a good film. It's Maybe you grew up with it and you're just like, oh my gosh, I loved that, that movie when I was like four. And uh, I want to just, I want to see it again. I mean, Christina Ricci's she's cute. She's, 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 she's a good actress. It, she, it's just, this movie, I think, was a little behind, beneath her in many cases. For her age, she was definitely a great actress. The, the thing is, um, <laughs> I forgot it again. Oh, they added a ton of extra dialogue in post. So, like, if you were blind, I'm thinking, if you're blind or you're listening to this movie on the radio or something, you could literally understand what was going on because each of the characters would be saying weird, quippy, dumb lines or informative lines like, turn left, oh, you're going too fast, watch out, like, constantly. It's not like it's needed even, it's just... They're just uttering things, and of course, none of this stuff was actually, well, some of it was uttered in the moment and probably didn't sound good, and they had looped it, but then there's other stuff that, you know, they're they're shooting wide and, you know, from outside the vehicle, and they're just like, hey, they're going that way, go over there, turn there, slow down, make a left. It, it's just completely useless useless dialogue but I, again it's i guess it's meant to add tension to it but then there's also points where everybody has to make just a really dumb punny line that isn't funny i, I appreciate puns when they're funny but none of it's funny <laughs> and everything again i'm not gonna spoil this but everything works out at the end everything's fine uh everything works out a little too fine in in the end like there's no consequences for anybody but the bad guys. And we don't really see... I mean, we get a motivation for the bad guys at the end. But who cares? Like, it doesn't really matter. Just like, okay, here's the reason why we did it. And you never see... You, you assume that they went to jail and, and, and that Zeke gets, you know, not punished for destroying everything, even though he didn't destroy... He was just part of a car chase trying to do his job, even though his boss is telling him, you're doing a bad job. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want just a completely inane uh, film that you're just really not expecting a lot from, yeah. I say, yeah, go for it. Um, or if you love this as a kid and you just want to revisit it, it's not going to have aged well, no. You're not going to say, oh my gosh, this really holds up. It's not. It it might be entertaining uh, to kids who want to watch a show, a movie with a car chase and cats. And, and Dougie Doug is a funny guy. He's a funny guy. It, it's just, I don't think even he, he's much funnier in Cool Runnings. It's just he doesn't really do, he just, I don't know. I think they just had, Disney had the property. And just like, hey, it's time to make a remake. Let's get these actors that are hot right now. Or that we have connections with. Although this might be the only Christina Ricci film for Disney. Ever. Officially. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Hold on a second. I, there's something I forgot to say. I need to pause myself for a second here. And <laughs> tell you something. I want to show you something that I f remember finding as I was watching the film. Uh, I took a picture of my local theater marquee back in 1997 when this movie came out and they played they were play, they had two screens they played had two movies at the same time it was that darn cat and the empire strikes back yeah the, the original trilogy was re-released uh once a month uh january february and march in 1997 and, and the empire strikes back came out in february so um, that matches up with the release date of That Darn Cat, which is, I think, in the middle of February or so. And somebody decided to switch the letters between Darn and Empire, the R and the M, to make, well, that damn cat. That's, I just had to show that to you. I'm sorry. I'll uh, let my... We'll just go back to me. So, yeah, that's, I think, her first and only... But still, yeah, it's, I don't recommend it. <laughs> Unless you're really, you've watched a whole lot else on Disney Plus and you're just like, hey, you know what? 
let's watch a remake of a classic movie from 1990 and the, the remake that they made in 1997 starring Christina Ricci and Dougie Doug. Have you seen all of Dean Jones's stuff? Well, you gotta watch this if you're gonna watch everything Dean Jones made for Disney. It's a given, even though he's barely in the film. So, that's all I gotta say. Let's pick tomorrow's episode. 83. 83. 83. She seemed to sound annoyed. That robot voice. 83. Come on. Give me something good. 83. It's a short. We're getting a short. Um, I don't think we've had this. For some reason, it makes me think we did, but I'll find out soon enough. After I check it, after this is all over, and I find out that it is something we watched already, then I'll pick another one. But for now, we're going to be watching a Pixar Spark short, and it is called Burrow. Yep, Burrow. I believe it deals with Bunny Rabbit or something. Burrow, a Pixar Spark short of the next Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow with that.